Dime Magazine, here we are once again, man. I mean, come on, just take a look, man. Take a look. Take a look. Is your number one around the way girl, Phoenix Fire, here with DJ Knowledge playing all the 90s and 2000 R&B songs you forgot you love. We're here to remind you. All right, nobody move, nobody get hurt. It is your number one around the way girl, Phoenix Fire with DJ Knowledge. You guys hit us up right now. You can download that app on Android or iPhone or you can listen to us right now, www.ocradio.com or follow us on WWOC Radio Media on Facebook. We're playing the music there too. We are here with yours truly, Phoenix Mother mm -mm, Fire. <laughs> okay, real talk, man. And all our global listeners, man, all our global viewers, man, thank y'all for tuning in again because this is what it's really about right here, man. And us getting to know Phoenix. And what Phoenix Fire is about. Like, how are you doing? I am doing well. I want to thank you so much for having me here at Dime Magazine Podcast. I'm so excited. She's just saying that because I paid her to say that. But like, no, 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 no. You, you have to, like, really understand, like, how much of an honor it is to have you here you know what I mean because it's people like you and you yourself that allows us to continue to do what we do you know what I mean and you guys are gonna understand who she is you know what I mean and just take a look take a look man you know and she's very stylish I am. okay very humble yeah. right and not only that She's very intelligent, man. You know, and I, I just, I just want to, you know, take it back to the beginning, if it's okay with you. You know, uh, just your humble beginnings. Like, what made you want to get into radio? You know, and also, also, she also has a security. That's what we're going to talk about. Like, like, what, what made you want to get into radio? So, radio is very new to me. I was introduced to radio about two and a half years ago, and... Um, I really liked it. I looked at it as an outlet um, to do just for fun. And I loved it. I really loved it. And the my humble beginning was a small radio station out of Boston. But, you know, there are certain rooms you just don't fit in. And I had to walk away from that radio station. And Do you want to shout them out or is it like a... Shout out the yeah. radio station? Yeah. The one you used to work on? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, my bad. All right. Well, let's leave that alone. Well, anyways, yeah. yeah. Um, but then I was hit up. I went home for a little bit, and I was hit up by DJ Dex. Oh, and shout out to DJ Dex. That's my dog. Shout out. Yeah, yeah, I was home for a little bit, and I was sitting there thinking, like, what am I going to do next? I was already doing a lot of singles events. I was doing some events. I was doing some hosting, but I wasn't quite Phoenix Fire, your number one around the way girl. I was more so, like, a radio personality and someone that was interested in putting her hands into doing events and putting singles together or just people together and um dex hit me up and he said phoenix i don't see you on the radio I, I was like well you know i had to walk away from that that was just not a good fit for me and it's always now what, now, now what do you feel like wasn't a good fit for you as far as radio like what was a part of it where you was like uh eh. it was it was the the atmosphere wasn't a good fit for me um and as a woman as a mother as a role model um i felt like i'm not giving up something of myself in order to stay that makes sense yeah that's that we're not doing that at 41 at the time i was 41 i'm not doing that um so i decided to walk away i didn't think it was a big deal i looked at it like this was something i did for this time and it's time to move on but when dex hit me up and he said i want you um to to check out where we're at on big city radio and shout out to big city radio oh yeah big shout out to y'all man Shout out to DJ Deck. Shout out to Jeff Two Times. Oh, big shout out to Jeff Two Times. Come on, keep coming with it. <laughs> shout out to Richie, the owner of Big City Eight, uh, Big City Radio eighty eight point five FM. That just sat back and allowed me to be myself, and I really appreciate that. Now, you going from one, you're transitioning obviously from one radio station to another. Like, what did you feel that you were able to take with you, even though the other one wasn't really your fit? Mm -hmm. How was you able to take something, or was there anything that you took from that as a lesson and brought it to the new radio station? 
there wasn't anything that I learned that I took. I, I would say that what I learned and as being a, a easy learner was radio etiquette. That was something you have to learn. Um, you have to learn when to pause, when to listen, when to talk, when to, you know, when to ask the question, when to draw back. Um, I would say that initially when I was at the other radio station that I also learned um, like the system, like how to go live and how to coordinate the videos and audio. But other than that, I'm naturally creative. So. You are. And that's a yeah. good thing because like hearing you on the radio, right? You have a radio personality's voice. You know what I mean? So like, how are you able like, do you ever practice? Like, do you ever like sit in the mirror at home and be like, hey, no, no. It's no. easy. Nope. Uh, being a Roxbury native, yeah. being, you know, your number one around the way girl from Roxbury, Madison Park Tech, vocational high school. I was always told that I sound like a white girl. Well, for all y'all, for all y'all out there, who, you know, all our listeners, global listeners, those are high schools actually in Boston. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So growing up, and they know who they are, you know, they were, they had made fun of the way that I speak, and... There's no such thing as speaking white. It's just professional. I don't even think it was... I was a kid. So I think that um, growing up in a household with a father, especially from a different country, my father spoke very properly. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So where are you, where, like, your whole, you're like your mom and your dad, where, where are they from? They from right down here at the south end, but my father's from Honduras. Okay, there you go. Okay, so you're half Honduran. Um, I mean, um, I, I mean, I consider myself black American, but, or American. I mean, ain't no wrong with that. father was just born in Honduras, you know, that... I was born here. So I got it. So he was born there, but he really grew up here. Right. So, um, yeah, he came here when he was um, maybe nine or ten. But back home, they were, um, the teachers were English teachers. So whether they were from England, I don't know. So my father speaks pretty well, I guess. And I speak. I guess we sound like him. So growing up, that's what I heard. Because I, I find myself to be quite hood, quite city. I'm really much a city girl. Yeah, yeah. as you said, she's the original around the way girl. I try to stay that way. Um, I So there was no practicing how to give proper radio etiquette i think that was naturally just in me i think maybe my voice the kind of high pitch the kind of young sounding voice is what carried on that radio personality that's the only thing i can think because i talk like this all the time even yelling at my kids well see <laughs> damn <laughs> well see you know like just listening to you right like i, I feel like you're just gonna take the mic and interview me like i'm like <laughs> yo she's tough y'all y'all better tune in like please shout out your radio station i want to give a shout out to wwoc radio.com that is woke radio woke media woke podcast i love you guys guys courtney boston um t lawson i just love you guys yep yo shout out to courtney shout out to courtney shout out to t lawson like she's calling out big names right now you know what i'm saying and those are my people those are my family you know and for you to be working alongside with them man i salute you and i give you your flowers because those women are very powerful in their positions and for you to be with them in that circle that says a lot you know what i mean so like my next question to you is is when you're on the air right did you ever have a moment where you forgot what she was gonna say um, I think I still carry baby brain, like my. Youngest, I'm saying even with the notes in front of you. Um, yeah, like my my youngest is seven, and sometimes I still stumble over my words. Sometimes I, um, think like, what am I about to say, or what did I just say? But for some reason, I think God just makes a way that it just runs smoothly. Because usually, if I'm on the radio or if I'm doing something like a podcast or on live, it's live. Um, like, um, you know, <laughs> um, is one of those where it's like a filler word. And sometimes you do it when you're not quite sure what you're going to say next. Well, you know, what's funny that you said that because like the little filler words like, um, or whatever it is, right. You know, in today's day and age, that really doesn't matter. 
No, because yeah. the young generation say bro. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know the other words, but yeah. there's always something that they throw out there that makes absolutely no sense. But I love you anyways. <laughs> see, they see that's what I mean. Like, you know, and like when you're in an interview, like a live interview and you have a person sitting next to you, right? Like what's your niche to go at them like to make them open up and feel comfortable like what's the icebreaker like do you have like a signature icebreaker i don't um you should um (laughs) i don't necessarily usually if before an interview i ask the person that i'm interviewing what would you want me to ask you I think it's important that they're able to give themselves the opportunity to say what they want to say and to be asked the questions they want me to ask them. I feel I was about to say, um, I say it. I feel. <laughs> hey, <we're, laughs> fuck it. Oh, I'm, hey, sorry. <laughs> we're we're going to edit that out. <laughs> I don't necessarily know what I'm going to ask usually you know the flow is good or we're vibing we speak before just like how you and I spoke before and and some of those questions that you know that you might want answers to that we didn't quite finish that's what I do run throughs right run throughs yeah yeah well that's good because you know and the reasons why I ask you these questions too is because we got a lot of listeners you know and a lot of viewers that you know the Emerson colleges and uh, you know all the other media schools communication schools you know teaching the young teaching the youth you know sometimes it's not about just starting a podcast or starting getting a mic or doing this and you notice how everybody's always they get what they need and then they're on there and they don't know how to carry themselves you know what I mean like and so shout out to all y'all man all y'all communication students man journalists majoring and all that stuff listen with her man and, and that, that's I'm, I'm really glad that you said that because you're actually educating our listeners right now and that's important like having uh, on air etiquette right you know especially in today's day and time even though it's not really you know what I mean right I think right now in this day and age anything goes um um (laughs) and being professional is kind of pushed to the side having morals and you know sticking firm to your beliefs and your thought process you I think the younger generation will just kind of go with the flow. Even in an interview, they'll move with the flow. Like, yeah, you know, you vibe, body language starts to change. I'm 43. I'm not changing. And I think that... Stick to who you are and what you know. And I, I have no choice. I think me being who I am has brought me to where I am. And like the word of God says, your gifts will make room for you. And I think... Hold on. Can you say that again? That was deep. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> I told y'all nobody can't come up here. <laughs> you say it again. Well, well like the, the Bible says, your gifts will make room for you. So my gift is just being who God created me to be. I don't know how to be anybody else. And I think that when I'm in those rooms, those rooms that I've had to walk away from that wanted me to be something that I wasn't or to give up a piece of myself to stay in an environment that was actually beneath me, it's time to go. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. So I can understand why you had to do, you had to make that transition, you know, so kudos to you and you're successful. You're that much more successful now in radio, you know, and what is one of your key points that you love, your memorable key points of working at the radio station? I love, especially that one. I love people. Like I really love people. Um, I work sometimes out right out on the street, like when the the stations are down, I kind of work for a company where we have to help like passengers and stuff. I do that once a month. That's dope. I, I do that just to be with people because I don't really get to get out much. And the money is good, even though sometimes it's one month, a weekend or whatever. Whatever. You out there. I But I love it. Um... So, you got to do what you love. No, you're right. And being on the radio allows me to have a voice, but be interdependent or be myself. Like, I got to rely on the radio station, but I can also still be Phoenix. 
Phoenix. And a lot of people don't know that that's actually your real name. Yeah, that is my name. I mean, people play their self sometimes calling me <laughs> by my middle name. Like, But, I mean, my family and friends know my middle name is Joy. But I was going to ask you, can I say it? I mean, it is what it is. They know. <laughs> but Phoenix is, you know, Phoenix is also who I am. And there was some decisions about using, your, you know, your government really to... Um, advertise yourself but we, I'm, I can't sleep on the phoenix and that's a family name you know that's a family name that's dope yeah that's that's our family my grandfather is Edwin Phoenix my mother was Cynthia Phoenix like that's a family name but wow so it carried yeah generational it, it's our it's it's a it's my mother's maiden name like that's our name um but my thing is when I think about the Phoenix and what the Phoenix represents and who the Phoenix is that I give myself a minute, I will consume myself and then I will rebirth myself. Wait, is that what Phoenixes That's do? The bird, the, the Phoenix, every 500 years, she consumes herself and out of the ashes is a new Phoenix. Wait, is this real or is this? A- it's Greek mythology. Oh, mm-hmm. like, but damn. The Bible talks about the ashes of a bird, like reborn out of the ashes. Like, you got to be talking about that phoenix you know what i mean but that's deep you just taught me something i hey did any of y'all know that i, I yo that's <laughs> deep i like that yo the, no never mind i was gonna jinx myself but never mind <laughs> no no <laughs> we're gonna leave that alone i'm good with one <laughs> no but uh you know uh just from your name alone right it speaks volume mm-hmm. especially based on you you know really breaking down what the word the term the name right. you know what i mean And I don't know if you want to call it an inheritance or whatever, but the name Phoenix, Mm -hmm. that says a lot. So it makes a lot of sense to me why you are flourishing and you're successful. Because that, I mean, come on, that's really tough to live by. Phoenix. No, you're right. You're right. You're totally right. But I lost myself for about 10 years. You know, I did a 10 year bid. Yeah, I did a 10 year bid. It happened. In marital prison. Wait, you? Yeah. Oh, I thought she was just speaking about oh, life. Funny. No. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. Because we actually did interview. We talked about that. Are you Are you familiar with? Uh, oh gosh. Um. You know, we're gonna get back to that in a minute. But she's a powerful figure. She was on BET. She's killing the game, and she's gonna be so mad at me because I forgot. I, and please oh. forgive me. <laughs> but she was on a podcast as well. Her numbers were through the roof as well. Not because of the numbers, but because of who she is. Right. And she's a powerful person. That's why when you said, I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, oh, shoot. We got another, you know, someone who did 10 years. 10 year but 10 year life bid. 10 year life altering bid. You know, when you marry the wrong person, you hook up, you give children to somebody that wasn't really deserving of your time. Um, in that, um, time of confinement I was not Phoenix fire at all so what where, where do you think I mean do you mind speaking about it a little bit okay so like with you going through that that confinement mm-hmm. like did you feel like it broke you or do you because remember there's a lot of women that were in your situation and that are in your situation so what can you say to those because let's be honest there's going to be women that's going to be soon in that situation so you going through that like how was that for you going through that 10-year confinement Uh, my thing is it's unfortunate that a lot of women do go through really tough marriages and relationships because your foundations are not always strong you know who you are as as being raised as a little girl mom and dad who pour into you good things love and who you are and teaching you to love yourself you don't they not everybody gets that i would say i was never broken i would have to say that i always remembered who i was 
isn't there a movie like remember who you are i don't know that's a good question <laughs> hey if y'all see, if y'all know that movie yo talk about it talk about it <laughs> i mean did you ever see that movie there you go the lion king oh the lion king Ooh, i love the lion king the tissue y'all <laughs> you know like um gonna cry i don't know i'm a very emotional person but my thing is I had to remind myself over and over again, you know, joy. Yo, let's get a tissue. She, you know, you know I need a tissue? <laughs> to remember who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And it's unfortunate that so many men and women, because I don't like to put it, because I have two sons and I have two daughters. I have two brothers. I have two sisters. I have a mother and a father that all endured some stuff to alter who they are right to alter who they are or who they were supposed to be right but for some reason i can always hear my mother say honey remember who you are i can hear my father saying honey you're my beautiful queen (laughs) right but there's a lot of people that don't have that and you you sound like you're a daddy's girl I love my father. Yeah, I really do. I love my dad. And I removed myself from my dad's life because of the person that I said yes to. And it's not because I didn't love my father or anything. It's because I forgot who I was. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we lose ourselves. And we lose ourselves to keep this relationship, to keep this marriage strong. Um, But I don't regret the I definitely don't regret the children I don't regret that time of getting to know myself because I'm telling you in those years of uh, being in a like walking into a marriage that was going to end I learned a lot about Phoenix I learned a lot about myself and that I can be sidetracked I can forget who I am I can gain 200 pounds you was 200 pounds? I can gain wait, 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 pounds. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. She's so little, <laughs> right? And not only is she little, you know, what? 200? For real? And it wasn't because of the children. It was just after the children, it was the stress. Where you want me to go? You want me to sit up? No, 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 no. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't because of the children. It was because of the... What do you want me to... What is he doing? It's because of the stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this dude's wild. Yo, shout out to Cliff. <laughs> Yo, listen, like you know, you. <laughs> so listen, you like you going through all of that, right? right? And you going through that level of stress, and that's a lot of weight to gain. Not from eating, not from anything, but no, it, stress. It was, it was also from eating. It was also from eating because during COVID, we're stuck in the house with our kids. And then I'm, I filed for divorce the year before. And it's like all these things. And then the embarrassment or the, the, the guilt and the shame of, of being married and then having all these children and going through divorce. My spouse at the time would say to me, nobody's going to want you with four kids. You know, and that lingered in my head. No, nobody, especially being 200 pounds, short, knees hurting. It's bad enough. We had to climb, I had to climb up all these stairs today. I'm like, no, I got to get in the gym. I got to get in the gym. But imagine, you know, having all that weight on your knees and then carrying little kids. And then two of my kids are like 14 months apart and never again, never again. Your story is really deep. Like even like, Fast forward to today, right? You're living your best life. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you have to do for you and your kids, right? How do you see yourself now, right, versus back then going through it? Like, if you ever had to go, God forbid, but if you ever had to go through that again, would you ever go through that again and accept it? Or would you say no? Meaning, you already see the red flags right in front of you, so you won't have to go through that again. I actually think that it will be impossible. Not saying that it can't happen, but I think it would be impossible for me to repeat that. Now, we already know there's that saying, same play, different characters. I went through that with my daughter's father, then I went through that with my uh, ex-husband, 
can that happen again i would say no and the reason why that i would say no is because when i pray i say god you have to give me the spirit of discernment that i am able to see the enemy from afar so that i will not be sidetracked this time i'm too old i have children that i love it's important that i stay in a place even if i'm single do you know how many times i go home and cry because i'm by myself because i look at myself like i'm a wife i'm a mother i'm exceptional i can cook i can clean i am submissive all those things but there has been no whoa, whoa 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 hold on hold on <laughs> now 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 watch this in in a few uh interviews back right um you just said a word that stood out that word submissive and a lot of women have an issue with that word now again to me as a man there's nothing wrong with that word what it is is who are you being submissive to you get what I mean? So that's why when I talk to a lot of women, I educate a lot of women to say, listen, all men ain't bad. Yes, everyone puts out their, how was we talking before, uh, their best representative. Right. So at the end of the day, you're not a representative. You're coming out fully with who, like same thing oh, you're doing right now in front of everyone watching you. Right. You're being you. You're, you're letting it all out the bag. So people need to know that on day one of them knowing you, them hearing you, them getting to know you, that this is who you are, not just to t today, but also 20 years, 30 years, to the grave. Right. Phoenix. Yeah, I, being submissive is one thing, okay, but yeah, you're right about that, because my father would say, honey, you're the same way you was when you was a little girl, obviously, however I was, I'm the same way, but um, to be submissive, I'm, sub I like, I, you can be submissive to anything. You can have those type of traits. Um, but I think it's an upbringing thing. But why do you think a lot of females have problems being submissive? Oh, that word submissive, period. Like, chicks gag to that. <laughs> no, it's crazy. I think because... So it's many, funny. Sorry, it's crazy, guys. So many of us have seen grandmothers and mothers be you know loving kind and then you also see grandma and ma cry and dad is over there he got two or three kids mom is fighting and i think i think and even if they didn't go through like i didn't see that stuff but um but that also didn't bring me to a place where why wouldn't i want to have a man in my life kind of guide me to be a better woman and being and being able to say okay honey i can do that the right man the right one because i was submissive for 10 years yeah i, w I was I, can i can i just <laughs> listen <laughs> oh my god i gotta be honest with this like hearing this as a man a responsible man yes i big myself up and to all y'all responsible men to all y'all who have wives you're happily married and all that stuff like we understand that being submissive is key and i totally get it but for all y'all guys out there pick up what she's putting down because she's telling you guys like she's giving you game right now pick that game up do what you gotta do don't just try to be womanizing trying to wander have this and that and you got a whole family at home i get it but at the same time can, can you please just keep educating them but i and some of them ain't listening but it's not just a one-way street i think that um you know i always pour i always throw out what has been poured in me it's to submit to one another like it's not just a woman just submit even though yes women are called to submit to her husband and and, and there's where how we get played too right because i was a girlfriend i was a baby's mother we yes honey yeah and you're not the one that the ring gets put on the finger and then you feel played and you feel like i did all that so then when you come out of that relationship i'm not doing that again I think that once we forgive the person that we submitted ourselves to, we could do it again. So a lot of people do things, they get hurt, and they're too afraid to do it again. So do you feel like their guard goes up at that point and going into a new relationship? Well, there goes the baggage, the red flags. It's, I think the key 
is just forgiveness. I must forgive that person first. And they'll say, oh, forgive yourself too. Yeah, yeah, You've heard yeah, that yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. forgive yourself too. Yeah. But no, let me forgive them. Maybe they didn't know any better. Maybe they did not know how special I am to treat me. Do I know that I'm special? See, that's the key now. Now you're talking. Do I know if I'm special? A lot of us don't even realize that we're special, that we're worth being loved. And yeah. I mean, we got all kind of issues out here. But I think the main, the main goal in order to go on to a next relationship without those walls or without those baggages, let me forgive this person first. Let me tell you something. As soon as my divorce was final... <laughs> I know. Listen. Anybody that owed me money or looked at me funny, let me tell you. Soon as my divorce was final, I was ready to get into another marriage. That fast? Because I forgave. Oh, it's not about that fast. I'm not saying. No, I mean. Apparently, I'm not married. It's been four years. But what I'm saying is. <laughs> yo, that was deep. With you. I told y'all, man. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I refused. To bring in anything that that person brought me. I refuse to bring in any of him. I mean, I already got the kids that look like him, right? Like, I look at them and be like, damn, that nigga's in my house. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. wait. (laughs) Yo, this is going to sound messed up, y'all. But have you ever... (laughs) Have you ever looked at your kids that look like him and be like, <laughs> "Yo, they all look like him." I'm one of those mothers that have. I gave birth to four kids and no one looks like me. I mean, my friends was just telling me today, "Oh, well, the little girl, you know, she kind of looks like you, and your oldest, they kind of." No. Um, oh, you know what? But guess what? I have to continuously ask God to help me to forgive, help me to love, because. I'm going to be honest. Thank God for the tissue. Aww. Sometimes I look at my oldest son and I'd be like, oh. Mm-hmm. He looks like a good mixture of us, but the mannerisms, the way he talks sometimes, like it almost triggers like a post-traumatic stress to know that even though I have severed relationship and severed the, that marriage and that covenant, that I still got a piece of, not the other kids, just this particular child that I love. And he's so wonderful. It's some, even though they all have their own individual qualities, there's something about him. It remind, and then I, I would have to ask him, I say, honey, do your dad tell you to act like this when you come home? Because... He speaks, he talks like me, right? He's like, hi, mommy. He's 11, and he's like, I love you. Have a good month. I'd be like, I love you too, son. But I, there is things that are, I mean, you cannot run from the blood. You can be taking birth over here, don't ever know your parents, live in this environment. The environment will alter and manipulate you to be different. But then you wonder why you... Fat, fancy burning things or you fancy beating people up and then your adopted parents be like John what is wrong with you I don't know why I do yeah. it's yeah. the blood you know so sometimes I look at my son and I be like how am I? but you know what I love him I pour love because at the end of the day he was not brought up the same way his father was his mother is not his mother. My son's mother is me. His father's mother is somebody else. So my child is not being raised in that same environment where there is a lack of love. So I pour into that. That the 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 memory of DNA is always going to be in in our kids. <laughs> you know what? As you're talking. There's a lot of tears. Oh, like, you, do you see how deep you are? I try not to be. No, but you know what? It's it's in you. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm tearing up, but it's on the inside. If if you keep talking, like I'm gonna be bawling, like, and I'm very emotional. I don't do that it, here on Dime Magazine podcast, everybody. <laughs> no, but everyone's crying. No. Right. Oh my goodness, I didn't mean that. Yeah. No, it's okay because you're touching lives. Yeah. You're touching. Then I. 
No, no, not you. No. No, when I see somebody tearing up. No, don't say you too. No, I just. I, all I can say is this is a beautiful moment. There is a time and a place for everything, and and, and this is beautiful. Right, and I and I always am happy when if I could do anything, I always say, God, let them see you and not me. Let it be a you thing and not me thing. Yeah, I use my pretty face. I do use my smile. I use my swag. Every as you should. But at the end of the day, that's what touches people. Who they see that representative is not just Phoenix it's also God you know what I mean? all day every day you know and I what I want to do though I want to I want to get back to business because yeah. you a tearjerker man <laughs> I'm sure this going I'm sure there's people on here crying now that's not where I'm trying to go no but you went there and that's a beautiful thing you know because what you just did you just gave enlightenment from your past to your present mm -hmm. and hopefully your future and you educated and you gave like come on man you're so deep you know you you are deep and but i before i start crying i i want to go ahead and like i, I just want to get back into now like what you got coming up because that's what we need to talk about all right so there's a big event coming up it's the at Madison Park High School. That's for everyone that's in Boston and all everybody in Boston stand up. Everybody who went to Madison's going to Madison, who's about to go to Madison, stand up right. because it's about to be down at the homecoming. So I definitely need you to talk about that because you hosted it. Yeah, I am so surprised. <laughs> yeah, so one of my Are you surprised? What, well, one of my um, alumni, what friends or I don't know what you call it, like someone I went to school with, we graduated this same year he still works at the school so i want to give a shout out to g he shout out to g yep, he's uh, i think an art teacher and i did an interview with them sometime last year about the effects of coming to madison park being in a trade school and i think it helped me out a lot because i'm gonna tell you what doing hair has paid my mortgage it's <clears throat> i retire now but um Working in a hair salon, being a cosmetologist has, um, it, it brought some cash. Like cash was, cash is king. And even it brought back, leverage, yeah, financial it was, leverage. It was a good time. It was a good time. Especially, I was doing real estate at a young age too. And when you're waiting every 30 days for a check for a property you sold, I was doing hair as well. So um, you was multitasking. I did what I could, especially when I was when I had one child at the time. So that was my hustle. And so he hit me up and he said, um, he calls me Joy. The reason why he calls me Joy, because we went to school together. People did not call me really by my first name, but he said, um, we want you to host. What do you think about the pep rally you host? I'm like, what? Yes. That's nuts. That is great. Yeah. I've been out of school almost 25 years. Are you asking me to host a pep? I said, there must be something about me that you're seeing that I don't. Because these kids are, these are different. I'm going to have to come up in the fly or something because they're going to know my name. And I'm going to introduce them to everything that we're doing out here because once they get a little taste of yo she's old though but she's on the radio she's your number one around the way girl phoenix fire playing all your 90s and 2000 r&b songs you forgot you loved i'm here to remind you and a lot of these kids still listen to 90s music why because their parents listen to the 90s music so i love to play 90s music and um with um woke radio my you know specialty show is Fridays. They're usually in school. It's from 10 to 1. But I'm, I'll be there. So they're going to know Phoenix Fire. Who's that? They're going to probably bring it home to their moms. Yeah. Like, Dad, do you know this girl from Roxbury? She went to Madison Park. We in there. Alumni is going to be in there. We're going to be in that house. We're going to have Cliff Braywave up in the house, too. All of Roxbury is going to be in there. I'm just, I'm just so excited. So... Yeah, they can definitely, if they follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see the flyer. You can email, especially if you went to Madison, you can email um, the young lady and get on that list. Um, I'm excited. I, yeah, you, you can see it all over your face. Wait, wait till I get there. And then December, in December, I think the, the, the date is December 27th, I believe. Let me just double check. Um, 
Yeah, we need this date to be right, y'all. So yeah. all y'all out there that's listening, you know what I'm saying? And please show up. You know, if you got family that goes there, if you used to go there, you know, show up, man. Show love. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's all about Madison Park, man. It's about that cardinal life. You know, you guys come out, man, make it happen. <laughs> he, went yeah. he went there. So, yes, let me just double. No, I, 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 I'm going to edit. <laughs> No, no, this is going, we're putting in the whole thing. Take your time. Y'all are going to edit. <laughs> hey, I will say this. We used to play against Madison. For all y'all out there, you know, I used to go to a school called Brighton High School. Shout out to my Bengals, you know, shout out to all y'all. And we used to smash Madison. We used to, what? Oh my God. It was, oh my God. Come again? We used to get rid of Madison in football, basketball, track. Oh, forget track especially. Oh my God. What? 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 Hey, listen, everybody. everybody. Dorchester High. Track, track, okay. Dorchester High. <laughs> Blah blah blah. Thank you. <laughs> blah. Thank you. Thank you. Bright high. Blah, blah, blah. Bright high. I don't know nothing of the of the sorts because I didn't play sports in high school. I played sports in middle school. Okay. But um again What middle school did you go to? I went to Edison oh, out Edison. in Alston, Brighton. Are they still open? No, I think they closed down. Okay. Yeah, I think they closed. They Yeah, that was a cool middle school. Yeah. I love the Edison, but yeah, that is um done. But um December 27th, Friday, December 27th is Intimate Karaoke. It's the third annual Intimate Karaoke, which is number one around a way girl Phoenix Fire. But I'm also having a co-host, which is Walter Wiz from the Black Ink Crew, New York. And shout out to Walter Wiz, yeah. Black Ink, everybody, man. Shout out, man. Nothing but love from Boston. Yeah, and then Hakeem Hakeem. Mm -hmm. Even though it's karaoke, I, I had to have Hakeem Hakeem in the house. And he will be doing like some type of, you know, sultry type sounds for the ladies if you're single. Um, but other than that, yeah, I am so excited for the end of the year. We're bringing the, we're closing out the end of the year in joy, fun, love. Um, it's just going to be a great end of the year because we're bringing in 2025 on a whole different note. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about now. Dealing with this whole pep rally, man, like it sounds like it's going to be something like that's going to really be dope for Boston, not just for the high school, but for Boston, period. There's going to be a lot of people coming out. So now, right, you hosting this joint, you really getting it in. Like what memory, what memory do you want to leave for the kids knowing that you're coming in and you're going to be their spokeswoman for that day? Oh, honey, what, what, what me and a, a, a few of my alumni that's going to be showing up is that we look great for our age. <laughs> <laughs> that we look great. Yeah. Like, don't sleep on us that time goes by really quickly. It doesn't necessarily give us time to grow up. I always tell people, everyone grows up but not everyone matures. There's a difference, you know, and just hearing from you and just your intellect and your passion for not just being, you know, a successful businesswoman, but also being a more successful person. Like that right there speaks volumes and I just had to give you your flowers, you know what I mean? Like that really means a lot, man. And I told y'all, real talk, man, this is yours truly. Now, how can everyone find you on social media? So they can I mean, it's gonna be right, it's right there anyways, but you know, yeah. You can find me on Instagram, or Facebook or even TikTok. I think with TikTok is Live Fire Media, um, Live F Y R E Media, and then Facebook and Instagram is Phoenix Fire F Y R E. And then Phoenix, of course, like Phoenix, like Phoenix, Arizona, it's P H O E. Not P H E O. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yo, she's like, yo, man, now you see why she's who she is and why she is. Man, I'm so happy to have you here. Like, it's such a blessing. And, you know, you're more than welcome to ever come back. You know, whatever it is, you got other events coming up you want to talk. Now, mind you, just to give you guys a heads up, too, that once we are all done with this, you know, she's going to take this as well and have it on her show as well. We're going to tag team on this because when it comes to women like this, just people, period, that have wonderful hearts, that have a, a real serious love and compassion for people, I support that. Why? Because it's Dime Magazine, baby. And I got three words for you. I want you to give me th three words, just three now, okay. of who Phoenix Fire is. 
Oh man, that's tough. Um, just three. Driven, sensitive, and giving. You heard it here first. You already know what it is, man. It's your boy Lenny. We out of here, baby. Phoenix Fire, everybody else in the building, you already know what it is, man. Keep tuning in because it's going down. Dime Magazine, we are out of here.